Testing, one, two, three. Check, check, check. Um, hello, hello. I haven't done this in a while. Let's hope it goes well. Let me check my mic level. If anybody is there, let me know if you can uh, see me, if you can hear me. If my uh, volume level is okay of the microphone. Let me, let me know, guys, if you can hear me. And then we can get this started. I haven't done this in a while, so I'm excited. Hey, Eric, you can hear me, you can see me. Let me know. Then I'm gonna start babbling. <laughs> um, yeah, the mic level seems to be okay. Let me double check. All right, cool. Thanks, Eric. So, hi, everybody. Um, I'm going to let some people, I'm going to allow some people to join the, the, the chat before we uh, start with the questions. But if any of you have any questions, let me know. So a lot of new stuff coming to the channel. Um, I, I made some videos. I made quite a bunch of videos that I'm going to release in the coming month. Let me, uh, let me tease you guys a little bit with what's coming. So I compared my Angle Special Edition Founders Edition to a couple of other Angle amplifiers, like the Fireball 100, for example. So that's a cool one. I uh, let's see what I what else did I create? I compared my SLO 30 to the Quad Cortex, both a stock amp model and a capture. That's also going to be a fun fun video. I'm also uh, going to release a review of my IK Multimedia iLoud monitors, those little monitors. Those are awesome. I did a video on some Friedman stuff. So a Friedman tube amplifier, which is my Double J Junior, comparing that to the IRX and the BEOD Deluxe, you know, to see if you can get the Friedman sound without having to buy the full amplifier. I also compared my Soldano SLO30 to the Wong's HD30, which is kind of a affordable Chinese sort of clone of an SLO. I compared the Kraken Mark II to the MT15. I compared the Kraken Mark II to the Engel Fireball 25. I also did a comparison of the Engel Savage Mark II to the Special Edition Founders Edition and I uh, just finished up a video where I compare the Special Edition Founders Edition to the Powerball 2. So those are coming in the next month. Next month, uh, I got some more videos coming that I can't talk about yet, but those are exciting as well. So uh, yeah, looking forward to that. I see that there are people coming in. Let me know, uh, say hi. Let me know how you are and uh, let me know that everything is working. And if you have anything you want to talk about, any questions or whatever, let me know. Greetings from Portugal. Greetings from the Netherlands. Thanks for joining. Hey, the other John Brown. Hey, kids. Hello, kids. Hi, mom. <laughs> cool. Thanks for joining, guys. Amps are fun indeed, dude. Uh, before we start with the questions, so guys, drop some questions if you want to know stuff, if you want to talk about stuff. I got some cool gear coming in very soon. Um, and I'm going to give you a little bit of a spoiler. Hi, Paul. Hope you're all doing well. So I got two amazing amplifiers coming in. The first one should come tomorrow, which is the Prometheus, the Lichtlärm Audio Prometheus. <laughs> oh my gosh. So when that comes in tomorrow, I'm going to do an unboxing video. And uh, I, I ordered a custom one, so it looks kind of unique. I'm not going to say how it looks. Uh, <laughs> And I'm not going to give any spoilers other than that, but that amp is going to be so much fun. I was expecting it to come today, but the UPS people were uh, late. So tomorrow it's going to come, and I'm so excited. I dreamt about it all night, actually. <laughs> Panel, my first ever Rev amp. So I'm super well. So they're sending me the Generator 120 Mark III Rev B, I believe, which is the newest version of the Generator 120. And I also ordered a custom version there with some with some very cool colors. So I'm very excited about that as well. And uh, so that's why I made a bunch of videos 
so I can spend the next couple of weeks, you know, writing and recording music for those demos, which is going to be a lot of work. So yeah, exciting times ahead, as well as a lot of work. So I'm excited about that. Um, yeah. So say hi in the chat, guys. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, just let me know. And uh, I'm going to hang out for probably an hour or so, unless you guys don't have any questions. And then I might leave sooner or a little bit later if uh, if a lot of people ask me questions. So, all right, let me look at some comments here, dudes. Welcome and do deaths. I doubt it, but who knows? Oh, one more thing, which, which is also going to be cool. In June, I'm going to go over to Henning Pauli's place in Germany, HP42, which is going to be fun. I'm going to hang out with him and maybe uh, make a video or two. I'm just going to kind of go there to hang out and maybe get to know the guy a little bit better. Better, So that should be fun as well in June. Um, yeah. What else? Yeah, I don't know. So different difference band hi from ukraine hi there what's up what's up and paul from luxembourg luxembourg hope you're doing well i'm doing very well thank you shredward says i have a cruise modded engel powerball which i love but i recently bought a fireball which is so great have you ever modded any of your engel amps i have not and i have never you know let anybody mod any of my amplifiers because they all are unique, you know, and I have so many amps, obviously, that I don't feel the need to modify any of them. Because if I need a different type of sound, I'll just grab another one, you know. And the Engel amps are really cool, so I, I don't feel the need to modify them. I don't have the Powerball 1, which I did have years, many years ago, 20 years, no, like 18 years ago or so. And I know that that's one voiced a little bit differently. I know that uh, the other John Brown did a comparison of the Powerball 1 and the Powerball 2 on his channel, by the way, which I recommend checking out. But uh, no, I haven't uh, let anybody mod one of my amplifiers. Um, yeah. But uh, never say never, but I don't know. Uh, I, I don't really feel the need to do that. But if you have like one amplifier that you want to you know, tweak a little bit, or maybe you have a couple of amps and one of them just doesn't sound to your liking. I can totally, totally understand why you would let somebody modify your amplifier. But for me, it's just not really um, something that I'm interested in. Thanks for the question, though. Keep them coming, guys, because I'm here to talk, to answer all your questions about my private life. <laughs> just kidding. Um, Thoughts on the synergy systems? Well, I have never tried uh, any of the synergy stuff, so I really I can't really comment on, uh, on on that. I like the concept. I like the idea that you can get various types of true tube amp circuits inside of one amplifier. That they're small and portable and stuff. I do believe that the power amp and the interaction between the preamps and the power amps is kind of uh, doesn't it's supposedly it doesn't give you the the true experience of those circuits at least in a lot of cases but i i haven't tried them personally uh it seems like a very promising system and i definitely get the appeal you know i'd love to try some of that stuff one day could be cool hey guys why are you all so shy let me know if you got some questions for me. I'm here to talk. <clears throat> and welcome, by the way. I hope you're all having a good day. I guess it's, uh, you know, late in the morning in the United States or early in the morning, depending where you're at. Where I'm at, it's four o'clock. This morning, I spent doing my taxes, which sucked. And then I made the comparison of the Fireball and the SEFE, -E, which was a lot of fun. Uh, sorry, the Powerball. The Powerball 2 is no slouch, by the way. Damn, that amp sounds very, very good. Obviously. Um, do you have a favorite high-gain solid-state amplifier? Egg Samich asks that question. <laughs> hmm, good question. Uh, there are some amps that technically aren't like solid-state. For, for instance, the Blue Guitar. The Blue Guitar is... Uh, Really cool, but it has the nano tube in it. 
but that's a really cool solid state amplifier really cool thing the black spirit is pretty cool as well it's not my favorite but it 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 does you know it does do pretty cool tones for a solid state amp i guess i guess those are basically the ones that i have um i'm probably forgetting one or two but yeah the blue guitar stuff even though it's technically not a 100% solid state amplifier that's <laughs> really good like the iridium highly recommend it highly recommend it bromero what dinosaur is your favorite t-rex and velociraptor i'm uh I'm a Jurassic Park nerd, so there you go. <laughs> Easy answer. By the way, guys, thanks for joining in. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, please drop a, a, a thumbs up and uh, give me a comment. Give me a question so we've got something to talk about for the next 50 minutes or so. That would be great. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining in. All right. The Mazamir. The Mazamir. I suck at pronouncing all these um, various YouTube names. I apologize. I need help making a decision. If you had to pick one between the angle Powerball and Savage, which one would you pick and why? That's a great question. That's a great question, especially since I compared the Powerball 2 to the SEFE today. And a couple of days ago, I compared the Savage 120 Mark II to the SEFE, as I just mentioned before. And uh, yeah, so I have a pretty fresh image of that in my mind. And it really depends on your budget. Um, the Savage is more expensive obviously it does have more features however uh the savage has one big drawback in my opinion it sounds great don't get me wrong and all the features are cool but it has two crunch channels so it has one clean channel two crunch channels and then a lead channel and clean channel is great crunch one channel is great the lead channel is great but the crunch two channel just isn't my favorite if you're really into mid-gain crunch stuff and like classic tones and stuff, that's a wonderful amp. And it obviously has a very raw and powerful sound, you know. But the Powerball is a bit more affordable and it has two lead channels. So there are multiple shades of high gain, which is preferred by me. So if you're on a budget and uh, you don't need like a lot of the switching options and stuff that the Savage has. The Powerball is an amazing amp. It sounds really good. Savage does have a very big and wild sound, but it basically has a crunch channel that I never really use. The, the crunch one channel is very cool, uh, and the crunch two channel is kind of weird, kind of raspy sounding. But yeah, they're both killer. So it kind of depends on what your need and what your budget is. By the way, hi, guys. Hey, hi, Peter. Thanks for joining in. Cheers from N. Is that New Zealand? Yeah, dude. What time is it over there? It must be really late, <laughs> I guess. Welcome, guys. Thanks for joining. And uh, again, let me know if you have got any questions. And please drop a like and maybe comment because that always helps with the algorithms. By the way, quick plug for the, the Magic of Tube Amps video. Did you guys catch that video? I want to say I, but we worked on that video very hard. Uh, it's like 75 minutes long, 32 people or so talking about why they love tube amplifiers so much and stuff. If you haven't watched that video, I highly recommend watching it because it's a lot of fun. If you're just joining in, I um, at the beginning of the video, I uh, gave a little bit of a spoiler on what's coming to the channel soon, including what very cool amplifiers are coming to the channel soon. So if you have if you've missed that, check out the beginning of beginning of the video. Okay, I'm just going to continue with your comments. Um, I, I hope that helped. By the way, uh, the Mazamir uh, for your question. Let me know if that helped. DJ Morales, I just keep ending with my JVM 410H. Never fails. Yeah, I have mine down there. You can't see it, but yeah, it's a very cool amp. If I had to get one Marshall amplifier, either the JCM 800 Studio, which I have, which is just there for the classic crunch, but the JVM, the JVM um, 410H is just such a cool amp. And it's a Marshall that does high gain really well. So you can't go wrong with that amp. And it does so much. 
four channels and three modes each. So that's like 12 different types of tones that you can get out of that amplifier. Blows my mind still. Amazing amp. <laughs> I hope mine never breaks. <laughs> uh, I'll go, I'm going to continue with the questions here. Paul asks, have you checked out Fryat VHT amps yet? Would love to hear some of those amps on your channel. I have not, but they seem really cool. Obviously, I've heard great things about them. I actually emailed them earlier this week to ask if they were willing to send me the IR loader load box just to try it out. But unfortunately, they didn't get back to me. They're probably very busy. And they're in the United States, of course. And sometimes it's hard for me to work with companies that are in the States. Not always, but sometimes because there's just obviously such a big difference, uh, such a big distance between us. And then the shipping and all that stuff becomes a little bit of a nuisance sometimes. But who knows? I'd love to check their amps out. Thanks for joining in, guys. Thanks for all the comments. Really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, let's hang for uh, for a little bit and... Uh, Talk gear and have some fun. Okay. Mieche, how to make an orange OR30 very tight? Well, I haven't tried the OR30. I know that it has a tube rectifier in it. I used to have the 8030, which is a very vintage voiced orange amp uh, with EL84s in the power section. It was a cool amp, but I prefer all the other angle amps that I, uh, sorry, orange amps that I have because they're a little bit more solid and thick sounding and they have a bit more of that typical orange character going on. I'm, I'm guessing that the OR30 has a little bit of a squish going on, which probably has to do at least partially with the tube rectifier that is in the, the power section. Uh, if you want to make that more tight, just, you know, put a boost in front and... Uh, yeah, and tighten it up, you know, remove some low end in front of the preamp, maybe boost a little bit of mids and some treble, and then slam that into the preamp, and you should get a nice and tight sound. But if the tube rectifier is making the sound very compressed and saggy, there's not a whole lot that you can do about that, I think. Uh, but I'd have to try that amplifier out, but I've never tried that amplifier. But my rocker verb, for example, oh, this is confusing, uh, over there. That works really well with boost pedals. And, you know, I'm a sucker for the Lichtlärm audio stuff. Like, if you want a tube screamer type of boost, I recommend checking out the King in Yellow. If you want a more clean-sounding boost, check out the Acer Hatter. I'm not going to spell out that name, but the Acer Hatter, you'll... Uh, you'll uh, find it when you need it. But that those are great pedals, and those should you know, get you great results. All right, I'm going to continue with your questions. Thanks for joining in, everybody. And uh, thanks for dropping in comments and questions and likes. I really appreciate it. Really helps the algorithms, because they are quite... Um, I don't know how to say it, but the algorithms are being more strict and, you know, aggressive. All right, let's continue. Um, I love you too, the other John Brown. He calls himself the other John Brown, but he's like the John Brown that I know. So to me, he is the John Brown, just so you guys know. I've never met the other guy. He seems like a really cool guy too, though. Um, okay. Okay. Hey, John, just received Golden Boy by Jackson Audio. Did you already have a chance to check out any pedal from Jackson? I have never checked out any pedals from Jackson. In fact, I didn't even know that they made pedals. Of course, I'm open to trying anything. Good morning, Robert. Eric, have you have you considered reviewing older gear, discontinued amp models, for example? Well, sometimes I do that. Uh, I mean, sometimes I buy amps. I don't buy a lot of amps anymore. Uh, last year or so, I bought the <laughs> the single rectifier, which was, you know, a very cool amp. Obviously, they don't, they don't make them anymore, but it was a lot of fun to uh, review that amplifier. But since I'm working a lot more with companies these days, I have a lot of stuff that's more relevant. And I, in general, prefer to use amplifiers that are just a little bit more relevant because of the fact that they still make them, which for you is probably better because then you can, you know, buy stuff based on my videos that is still available. That's why I'm selling 
stupid mirror image. That's why I'm selling my Randall, for example, uh, and my Rocker 30 orange. And uh, I'm selling one more. I forgot which one, but yeah. So I'm selling a bunch of amplifiers that aren't really relevant anymore, basically. But you know, I'm uh, I'm always excited about gear, and um, you never know what might show up on the channel. Do you have any Quad Cortex presets from you in the cloud? I don't have any presets in the cloud, but I do have a couple of captures in the cloud that you can check out. I think my name in the Cortex cloud is Guitar John SDS, if I'm not mistaken. Mieche, I saw you have an Axe FX. Do you use amp models or only effects with a real amplifier? Okay, so uh, that's a great question. Well, I do I do use my Axe FX3 a lot, but it's kind of like my uh, hub for connecting all my uh, amps to and stuff and for recording DI tracks. And when I'm doing a lot of my tracking, I often just do that with a built-in amp model and then I record my DI tracks. And then when I do the reamping, I put the amps in the loop with a little bit of a gate after it. And, and oftentimes, you know, IRs after the amp, obviously. I still need to try the new uh, update because obviously, you know, the fractal stuff sounds great. Yeah, I hope that answers your question. To everybody who's joining in, hi, thanks for joining. Hope you're all doing well. So NI says I sent back my angle E530 and bought a Fireball 100. Problem solved. Cool. Dude, the Fireball 100 is so cool. And now he needs tips for punk sound. One tip that I would have for you is for punk, turn on the mid boost. Thank me later. And if your sound is a little bit too scooped and a little bit too, uh, if it drowns out in the mix a little bit too much, don't be afraid to crank the treble to around two or three o'clock ish. And then to compensate, be careful with the presence because that might get a little bit too strident. You know, balance them out a little bit. And if needed, don't be afraid to crank the mids a little bit more because those those, those angle amplifiers, they sometimes like that a lot, you know? I've done videos about that, but not on the punk genre specifically. Inner Psycho, hi man, greetings from Brazil. That video on your story in the favelas was crazy. Yeah, thanks, that was a crazy story. I hope it didn't traumatize you too much. No, I'm okay. Brazil is very big and not all like that yeah man we had a great time there it was 18 years ago or so so it's a long time ago but we didn't only go into the favelas we also did a bunch of cool stuff so my memories from rio de janeiro are very good actually and interesting obviously if you don't know what i'm talking about guys you gotta watch my video about i almost died the day i met a murderer which is a true story crazy stuff not really gear related though <laughs> Other John Brown, John, how did you get into amps and into becoming one of the YouTube amp guys? <laughs> Thanks, dude. Uh, cool question. Okay, so when I right before I started my channel, I played the Axe FX 2 a lot, and that was basically the only thing that I had, and it was great. I thought I had the world of amplifiers at my fingers, so to speak. Um, and then a friend of mine, Kevin, he said, you should get one tube amplifier because it will give you a good, you know, feel of how a tube amplifier actually sounds like. And that idea also led basically to the magic of tube amps documentary that I recently released. John is in there too. His kit was wonderful. You guys have to check out that movie. We had so much fun, and it's such a fun watch, even though it's 75 minutes long. Anyway, so I got one amplifier, and then I was like, wait, in my Axe FX, I have a couple hundred amps, and now I just have one tube amp amplifier. And the problem with my personality is that, you know, there's no black and uh, uh, there's not a lot of gray, if, if you know what I mean. It, when I go for something, I really go for it. I don't do things halfway. Uh, so that's like uh, a problem with my personality, as well as, I guess, something that has helped me 
develop myself as a YouTuber because I just bought a whole lot of stuff when I started out. I invested a lot. And now uh, we're here. So yeah, that's the short version. But thanks, man. I appreciate it. The other John Brown. Shout out to the other John Brown. What a legend. I'm going to do a video with that guy soon, by the way. Maybe a couple. So stay tuned. All right. I'm going to continue with your comments, dudes and dudettes. Ladies. Are there any ladies in the house? Crickets. <laughs> Crickets. You see one of those things in the desert like whoosh, blowing by. I don't think we have a lot of ladies in the house today, but who knows? So, Peter Moore, finally got a replacement EL74 valves from my Grandmeister Deluxe 40. Should I, should I get the Primo valves next? I don't know. I don't know if more expensive valves are much better. Maybe in terms of reliability and stuff, sure. But in terms of the tone, the power tubes, I wouldn't worry about it, to be honest. I mean, that's how I would think. Thanks, everybody, for joining in, by the way. Really appreciate it. Let's have a fun hang. Don't forget to uh, drop a comment, drop a like, subscribe, and uh, drop a comment in the, in the chat. And let me know if you got any questions for me. Really appreciate it, guys. Thanks. I'm going to continue with the comments, okay? Uh, FBI official. FBI! I went from playing tube amps to Axe Effects. I take an Axe Effects all day. Cool. I mean, yeah, the Axe Effects is great. I have one too. And as I said a couple minutes ago, I use mine every day. If, um, if that's all I had, I would be pretty happy, I guess. But I've chosen a different <laughs> route, obviously. I just love tube amplifiers. If that wasn't obvious, uh, you know, when when I released my uh, the Magic of Tubes documentary video, but uh, yeah, modeling is great too. It's all great. I don't have anything against either of the worlds as long as it makes you happy. As long as when you plug in, you feel like yeah, that's cool. Then it's it's all it's all fine. There's nothing wrong, and. Uh, there should be peace in the tone galaxy. Um, Greg Smith asks, any opinions on the Orange Crush Pro 412? I have no idea. What kind of speakers are in that? Um, I don't know. I just have the 212 down here, which is an excellent, excellent cabinet. It's so solid sounding. Y you could also get one of those, like a regular 212, PPC 212, Orange. They have a huge roar and they sound quite massive. Um, hey, hey, guys. Hey, John, love your stuff and the Facebook group. Thanks. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure you guys have probably already joined the Facebook group. Rock and metal amps, pedals and gear. It's a great place. It's a lot of fun. Uh, me and a bunch of friends, we wanted to start a group that was as non-toxic as possible, you know, so peaceful place where people just can be themselves and post their YouTube videos if they want. And it's a very fun Facebook community. So join if you haven't already. Okay. Guitar Stuff asks, what do you think about the Soldano Hot Rod 50? Well, I don't have one. I've never tried the Hot Rod. Um, isn't that the SLO, basically? The, the problem that I would have with that amplifier is that now that I have my SLO 30, my SLO 30 has the depth control, okay? And I believe that the hot rods don't have that. And uh, maybe that's even like the most important control on the SLO and also the Astro because I really like dialing in the low end. And the depth control just gives you all the low end you need, basically. You know what I mean? But I'm sure that the hot rods sound absolutely awesome. I'm sure that they sound great. I mean, how can a Soldano amp sound bad, right? I've really come to love, especially the SLO 30. Really cool, really cool amp. Shredword, Shredword. Powerball 1 modded sounds way more open, way more mids, less compressed. Honestly, very comparable comparable to my fireball 
Cruz left a switch on the back so I can go back to the original tone. That's cool. Yeah, man, that's great. That's really cool. Now you basically have two amplifiers. So I guess that they modded it to sound closer to the Powerball too, I assume. Cool. Um, let's see. Howdy, John. Any recommendations on a first ML drum expansion? I'm starting a new project exploring the deathcore side of things. All right, great question. Uh, the, the grit expansion is great. That's a really nice one for just very solid and slamming sounding drums. And you can combine that with the main essentials pack. And then if you want more, you can get the, the other ones. But that's the one that I'd start with for the nicest character, especially on the kick and snare. And then you can just grab toms from one of the other packs. It's very affordable anyway, so you can't really <clears throat> go wrong. Eric Day, <clears throat> if memory serves me, you normally use single IRs, single speaker, maybe multi-mic combos. Yes. Do you find there is a place for using multiple IRs, two or more files? Yeah, of course. There is a place for that, and uh, there's nothing wrong with any method. I've found that I tend to prefer IR captures of one single speaker in general. Um, and I don't really like to blend different speaker types or different cabinets and stuff because i prefer to have a little bit more of a focused sound and just you know with the character of one speaker it just gives it more character because when you start blending speakers the character of the two speakers creates a sort of yeah bigger character a little bit less defined a bit more open and broad there's nothing wrong with that, but in general, I just prefer focusing on one speaker at a time because you really commit to a specific character, if that makes sense. But that's just my personal personal preference. Um, and if I were to blend some IRs, you know, in the Ownhammer packs, there are a lot of pre-blended files, but you can also just grab from the Rockbox, for example, grab a Greenback, grab a V30, Put them together and boom should work really well since they are i think they are phase aligned and stuff so yeah but in general i prefer to use just one speaker um guitar stuff will you release all your songs from the amp testing on streaming platforms i'm not planning on anything like that to be honest because i'm just too busy but who knows but there are short songs you know one and a half minutes long usually it's not really a song song. It's enough for a song. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Post-hardcore shorts. Another John here. So I'm struggling with getting my OR15 to sound better. What's a boost EQ tip that could really bring it to life? Okay. So are you using it with a real speaker cabinet or with a load box? Because I remember when I got my OR15, I put it into my load box. And I cranked the, the volume up too high, and then the sound gets darker. So you have to be careful with those amplifiers, the 15-watt amplifiers, because if, if you crank them too high, the EL84s are going to make the sound darker and a bit muddy. And if you go down below that point where the power tubes start to do that compression and saturation, it will open up. And if in that case you don't like the character, then it might not be the amplifier for you, to be honest. I mean, the OR15, to me, it sounds great. I love it a lot, but it's like, it does the orange stuff. It does the signature orange sound. And if that's not your thing, you can always put a boost pedal, like a tube screamer up front to make it more tight, for example. But maybe then the amplifier is just not for you, you know? But if it's the darkness thing and the muddy thing, Try turning down the level that might help, especially since it's a 15 watt amplifier. But yeah, I like that amplifier a lot. It's uh, really cool. And I also like the fact that it has plenty of gain on tap. And when you lower the gain, it does nice cleans as well and stuff. So it's, I think it's a really cool, it's one of the better sounding 15 watt orange amps, in fact. Cool. Thanks for the question. Um, 
Jackson Audio is not related in any way to Jackson Guitars, by the way. Ooh, I did not know. Any recommendations to get thick rock sound from the Amp One Mercury? Um, well, one of the things with that amp is that it's it's quite vintage, and you will never get the same punch and sort of bigness and modern sound out of the Mercury Edition that you can get out of the Iridium Edition. Um, I might have done a comparison actually, but I'm not I'm not sure. But what I noticed with the Mercury Edition is with the modern amplifier is that it's still quite squishy and uh, saggy, you know. And uh, and the Iridium just has a lot more punch and sort of I don't want to say headroom, but it just it's more chunky and it's more big sounding. So maybe if the Mercury isn't really doing your, what you want, maybe look into the Iridium because the Iridium does classic and clean tones very well as well. So you won't really miss a whole lot of stuff. But if you're into really vintage stuff and you know crunchy stuff, then the Mercury is a very cool amplifier. Um, let's see. Corro corrosive matter. I think we need the fractal in the hidden channel of the Engel SEFE4 cable method. Could be fun. Could be fun. The Prometheus by Lichtlerm Audio that's coming soon, it has a preamp defeat function. So that means that you can run stuff into the front of the amplifier, bypass the preamp, and then let the signal go straight into the power amp. And I think I want to try that with my Marshall JMP1. See, see if we can get that sort of Deftones crunch with the Prometheus. Really looking forward to that one. Let's see. And for everybody who's just joining in, hi guys, welcome. I hope you're all doing well and uh, thanks for joining. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. And of course, hit the like button, drop a comment in the comment section and uh, subscribe. Really, I would really appreciate that. Um, let's see, Robert Laypath, have you tried the Guptech One Beck pedal? It really thickened up the Victory Crack, and don't you mean the the Quebec? I have it in the cupboard somewhere. I have it up here. Yeah, uh, right behind the. Uh... I don't know if you mean this pedal, but this is basically like a depth and presence simulator pedal that you can put in your effects loop to, you know, add some low end or top end. It's a really cool pedal. Yeah, it's cool. I gave one away in a in a giveaway last year or so. It's a cool pedal. Joe Carter, I feel like I would be a crazy amp collection guy if I could afford to. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. It takes some dedication and it takes sacrifices. You know, you have to I had to make some other sacrifices in order to be able to come this far. Obviously, I'm far from rich. I don't have a driver's license, for example. I don't have a car. And etc. So yeah. <laughs> Sound healer, what is your top three amps? Top three. Are you crazy? When my uh Rev Generator 120 Mark III Rev B and Lichlerm Audio Prometheus arrive, then I'm gonna make a video on my top five amplifiers. And I'm also gonna do some wild cards in there because it's really hard for me to pick only three favorites. Uh, stay tuned for that. Should be fun. All right. Hello, John. Joining late. You're not late. You're right smack dab in the middle. El Gutierrez. Ale? El? El? Uh, dude, I'm, guys, I'm so sorry if I'm pronouncing your names wrong. Okay. Uh, let's continue with the questions. Peter Moore, my valves had issues, hence me replacing them. The factory EL84 valves are Chinese made. And Tolman only warranties them for six months. The Grandmeister Lux 40 has a three-year warranty through just not the valves. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I tubes aren't perfect. Uh, I had some issues with an amplifier recently with some tubes, but it just happens, you know. 
Oh, the Crush Pro 412 has the voice of the world speakers in it. I haven't tried them myself, but I've heard pretty good things. I think that, um, hey, Ian, thanks for your compliments, dude. <laughs> hey, Lucas, thanks for joining in, guys. Thanks for hanging with me because I was lonely. I was like, I want to hang with some gear gear guys. I want to talk about nerdy things and uh, nerdy, nerd, nerdy, nerdy, nerd out. Sound Studio. Hey, man, can you please give me some advice on dialing super low stuff? like double drop detuning guitar rules seem to not apply anymore in such low frequencies cool good question so what i like about my nine string is that in, in comparison to my eight strings so for example if i'm playing in f or f sharp when the bass is in the same octave which is what i do when i go that low um Sometimes it's not like super heavy, if you know what I mean. Um, I mean, it's heavy and thick, but it's it gets heavier when the bass is down one octave, right? But with my nine string, which I have tuned in C sharp, believe it or not, I'm still in a unison with my bass, but it's a lower note, and that's what makes it a bit thicker and heavier. Now, the key with those super low tunings is always, in my opinion, that you have to be careful with the low-end signal going into the amplifier. Um, so if you have a very thick and fat-sounding amplifier, like a rectifier, for example, or uh, you know the diesel or whatever, there's a ton of amps that have a more thick bottom, like an orange rocker verb or an Archon, etc. Then you need to use a pedal like an EQ pedal up front or a boost that either boosts the mids a little bit like a tube screamer, cuts the low end a little bit and maybe boosts the top end a little bit for extra clarity. And then you have to shape and mold the tone a little bit to get the note definition out of it. Some amplifiers like the EVH amps, for example, like uh, this one up here and my angle amps, uh, those tend to have a pretty tight bottom end response by default. So you might not need to use any, you know, pedals up front in order to get that clarity and definition out of the notes. Maybe a little bit, but you know, if you if you if you're playing a lot of those super low tunings, it would be recommended to get an amplifier that works well with that by default, in my opinion. That's my advice for now. I'm sorry. I got kids and they wake me up early. And uh, I went to a concert a couple days ago, Slash with Miles Kennedy and uh, Jonathan from uh, Mammoth. I met up with him briefly. And Mammoth did a great show as well. But I drank a couple beers too much. So I'm still recovering because I'm getting old. <laughs> okay. I hope that helped, by the way, Sound Studio. I hope that helped answer your question. Hey, John, are you still using the Imperium Live? I still have it. It's a great modeler. Um, I don't use it often per se, but yeah, it's a really cool uh, device with very accurate amp modeling. I like it. It's a, cool, it's a cool little thing. It has its quirks. I think I mentioned those in my review, but uh, yeah, if you want something that's compact and does some great amp modeling, check it out. It's cool. Peter Moore, do you prefer open back cabs or closed backs? I prefer closed. Yeah, open backs are not my thing. I don't. I, I prefer the more solid low end that closed cabs <clears throat> offer, even in the IR world, obviously. Sound Studio, David Maxim Mikik has a great video about open back cabs and why he prefers them. Cool. Maybe check out that video. Thanks for joining in, everybody. Hi there. Uh, yeah, ask me some stuff if you want. I'll hang around for a little bit. My girlfriend is cooking dinner tonight, so I, uh, I've i got some time. <laughs> cool. Uh, let's see. In your records, what's your bass chain? Good question. Uh, so my bass sound... Um, 
<laughs> oh, I have no excuse. I'm just a little bit tired. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> sorry about that. Okay, my bass. So I record my bass with my XFX. So that's where I record my DI tracks. Then it goes into Helix Native by Line 6. And there I have a chain with one of the Ampeg bass amplifiers with a compressor up front. If I recall correctly, it's like the studio compressor or the tube compressor. And then in front of the amplifier, in parallel, I have the Timmy drive, which for the heavy stuff I use to add a little bit of grit to the tone. Um, sometimes with an EQ in front as well to filter out some of the muddy stuff. And both those signals go into the amplifier and then into an Ohnhammer AMPG bass IR, the SVT fat ribbon file, I believe. And then I do some processing in the DAW, like some squashing with some compressors and stuff like that. Uh, that's basically my uh, my bass chain. Thanks for your question. Filippo Ogliani, your rectifier tone is sick. Thanks. Which plugin would you recommend to nil the orange channel? Like there are a lot of cool rectifier plugins out there, but it's a really hard amplifier to nail in the digital world. So it's kind of hard for me to answer that question right now, uh, to be honest. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I haven't I haven't tried a proper rectifier amp sim in a, in quite a while, so it's hard for me to comment on that. Oh, <laughs> check out my Tonex pack, Heavy Legends Volume One, I believe, has my dual rectifier in it, with each channel, so the orange modes as well as the red modes and the clean stuff. So yeah, that's that. Honestly, that sounds the closest to my rectifier. So that's what I use when I want to get a accurate rectifier tone. So Tonex, definitely. Yeah. Uh, Gabriel, you should do a review of the PV Viper X1. Um, uh, isn't that like a practice amplifier? Could be fun, but that's usually not what I'm really interested in. Lucas says he feels like he needs to check out me of the check out one of those Prometheus amps. Yeah, dude, it's such an amazing amp. It's mine is coming tomorrow, guys. My Prometheus is coming tomorrow, and it looks so cool. I dreamt about it tonight, and I can't wait. <laughs> if you haven't seen my video with Daniel yet from Lichler Audio, that was a really cool video. We talked about the amp and stuff. He was over in the studio. And um, yeah, that's a fun video to get introduced to the amplifier. And then I'm going to work on my uh, review the coming weeks, You know, where I try the amp with a bunch of different guitars and stuff. It's going to be a lot of fun. Renee, you own the Randall Diablo amp. Yes, but will you check out the Mike Fortin stuff? I'm open to trying anything, but I don't currently have any type of connection with that brand. I'm actually selling this uh, this Randall because I don't really use it much. And for my channel, it's just not really relevant and I need to make room for my new Prometheus and for the Rev Generator 120 Mark III Rev B. <laughs> I'm excited. Osheras24, best amp of 2024. Dude, I don't know. <laughs> well, this Engel Special Edition, Founders Edition, did that come out in 2023? So that one doesn't count, probably. Let's say the Prometheus, the Lichlam Audio Prometheus. It's going to be very hard to beat that amplifier. What an amazing amp. Okay, let's continue with your question as sound healer. Have you ever tried the Engel Savage from Plugin Alliance and the new Softube suite with the Engel Savage Mark II? I have not. I have not. They make cool stuff, so it's probably good. You know, maybe you can download a demo. In your experience, Bryce asks, with amp comparisons, style choices aside, what are the most common functional tonal differences in less expensive tube amps versus more expensive tube amps? Hmm. That's a very interesting question. And especially since today, 
I made a comparison of the Engel Powerball 2, which is like 15, 1600 euros versus the special edition founders edition, which is like 3,500 euros. So that's quite a big price difference. Let's say 2000 euros, a, a difference of 2000 euros. Now, one big difference between those amps is the features. You know, the special edition founders edition has three effects loops, all the tonal shaping options, you know, and all that stuff, reverb, five channels, MIDI. And in terms of the sound, it's like really fine tuned and really, um, really not polished in a, in like a bad way, but just really refined. It's really hard to make that amplifier sound bad, you know, whereas the Powerball too, it has four channels, but it has a lot less functionality. And sound-wise, it's a bit more raw and a bit more unpolished, basically. And that's just an example, and that's one brand, obviously. Uh, but I'm doing a bunch of comparisons on the channel soon. For example, with my SLO 30 versus my Wong's HD 30. So maybe that will help you to get a better idea. Amplifiers can definitely sound amazing. Hey, Lonely Rocker. Thanks for joining in, dude. Hope you're doing well. Oh, Dan, the Lonely Rocker, just released a review of his uh, LTD Phoenix Deluxe, guys. Check it out. He bought himself a Phoenix. I'm a Phoenix fan. You guys know it. So uh, check that video out. It's awesome. Okay, I'm going to continue with the questions. And uh, if you guys want, you can continue dropping questions until I leave. And don't forget to like, like, subscribe, and comment to help out the algorithms because... Yeah, I need it. Okay. Hey, Lady Rose, you have a super cool channel. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Um, okay, let's continue. A Desert Island, a Island Amp asks, slick as eggs. Desert Island Amp. Oh, my gosh. I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna, as I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna make a video on my top five amplifiers, and I hope that will suffice. <laughs> but I have to wait till my Prometheus arrives and my generator 120. Sugman, evening, got a question about Kraken Lunchbox version one. Even using Boss SD1, it sounds muddy and not that gainy. Maybe it's an issue with the cabinet or a low volume. Uh, using the governor. Okay, so that amplifier is pretty dark. Um, it should have enough gain, especially with a boost pedal up front. And if you're using the gain two channel with the boost pedal, it's going to sound way too tight and way too clang, 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 you know clangy. For the for the gain one channel on the crunch sound, that would work really well because it's a more fat and beefy tone, and that would work well with a boost pedal. But the gain two channel with a boost pedal, no thanks just for my personal taste. However, it's a bit of a dark sounding amplifier. It lacks the presence control. So you could buy something like this, which is a, a presence simulator and put it in the loop and then emulate a presence control to brighten it up a little bit. That could help because you're using the governor speaker and the governor is quite a dark sounding speaker. So it could benefit from... Uh, from a little bit of brightening up EQ, if that makes sense. Um, let's see. Slick as eggs. Are there any IRs that capture a true cab in the room without coloration from a mic? Nope. That's impossible in the IR world. You just have to be in a room with a, with a cabinet. I'm sorry. Bruno Moraz Antunes. Good morning, man. Good morning. Uh, good evening. Good good day. I would like to see your opinion on something. Would you recommend a Rev G20, D20, or a Tonex Kemper player? I already have a Katana Mark II 100 watts. Well, and what you're looking for. Um, however, as I I, the Magic of Tube Amps documentary that you guys have to watch if you haven't already. 
and otherwise watch it again because it's awesome. I really recommend getting at least one tube amplifier. And if you want to know why, check out the Magic of Tube Amps documentary. <laughs> Sick plug. David Zagajnini. Again, sorry if I'm pronouncing your names wrong. I'm I'm the worst. Hi, please can you tell me if the Ampero Mini is enough good as audio interface? Mm, I don't really know. I think I tried it for my review. You know, if you want an Ampero to use as audio interface, perhaps save up a little bit and get the Stomp 2 or the uh, Stage. That will give you a more solid experience, probably. Uh, Robert asks, have you tried the cabinets from Barefaced Audio? I have not. They should be very good. I'm sure they are. I haven't tried them. Constantine, hello. Let's see. Hello, it's almost evening here. Yeah, yeah, it's almost evening here as well. Um, let's see if we've got some questions left. I just got an Invective 120, congrats, and Capture X together. Your ch channel helped me to, to decide to get both pieces of gear. Thanks, awesome. You got yourself a wonderful amp. Now that's a really cool amp. It's a really wonderful amp. The Capture X is cool too. It's not my favorite, but it does the job, you know, and uh, it has a lot of cool functionality and stuff. So congrats and rock on. Cool. I'm jealous, even though I have the, the Invective 120 myself. I'm still jealous because it's a very cool app. Let's see. Let's see. I feel like Mini John. Lonely Rocker feels like Mini John. <laughs> Are you saying that I'm fat? I hope not. I am fat, though. <laughs> Gear stuff and things. Nice. I snagged a Viper baritone recently. Hell yeah, those are cool. Constantine, I oh, just curious about Rev, and you mentioned you will buy. Yeah, I'm getting the Generator 120 Mark III Rev B soon, and I'm very excited to finally experience the Rev sound. Really looking forward to it. Peter Moore, John, any amps from Toman's 70th anniversary catch your eye, so to speak? Hmm, I haven't looked into it. No, I don't know. I should look into it. Maybe uh, in a minute, I'll look into it. Gear stuff and things. Try an Earthquake or Devices Arrow Boost. It brightens while boosting. Yeah, there are so many good boost pedals in the world nowadays. I'm sorry, I can't pronounce your name, but you are asking EVH. 350 watt or 100 watt both are killer uh, depends on uh, your needs I mean they both have three channels the 50 watt is more compact but it still sounds huge like those 50 watts have so much low end I rarely go above 12 o'clock with the depth controls on the back so you know if headroom is your thing and you need a lot of headroom, you know, and a lot of power, power, the 100 watt is, of course, the better option. But I love my um, 50 watt EL34. It's a really cool amp. Constantine, why people use treble booster with Vox? Vox is too dark. I'm not a Vox expert, to be honest. So I'm not the best person to... Uh, answer that i guess because brian may used it i guess that's the reason all right the do the magic of digital amps documentary maybe although you know one of the reasons why i wanted to make the magic of tube amps documentary is just because i wanted to show appreciation for thing for something that i felt deserved a little bit of appreciation if you know what i mean and the digital world is doing just fine. So it doesn't really need it. Not that I'm trying to say that, you know, the tube amp world needed that documentary. Not at all, of course. But I just felt like doing a little bit of a nod to the tube amp world. Uh, maybe I'll do a digital one. I don't know. There's plenty of praise for the digital stuff on the channel. As everybody knows, I like both worlds. 
Um, let's continue. Crankshaft. This question seems so boring, but do you have a favorite acoustic brand or model? No, I'm sorry. How about my top five Fender amps? Yeah, top five Marshall amps. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not a big fan. I'm not a big acoustic player. I'm not really a Fender amp player. Um, let me give you a top one Marshall JVM 410H. There you go. <laughs> of course, I like my Marshalls. You know, especially the JCM 800 Studio is kind of that gives me that essential British crunch. I love that one a lot, to be honest, for that sound. Whenever I need that classic Marshall crunch without any compromises, that's the one I use, you know. JMK2112. I was pleasantly surprised with the Laney Ironheart loud pedal as a compact solution for high gain tones. Have you tried one? I have not. I actually, I, rem I remember sending them a message about that, but they didn't reply, so... I don't know, but it seems like a very cool uh, little pedal. Are the are these the little solid state iron hearts seem cool as well, and the new Black Country Customs iron heart amps seem really cool as well. I know that they revoiced the boost so that it's a bit more tight and a bit more aggressive. So that's cool. I'd love to try one of those. Levon Chikvides, hey John, don't you find the SLO not tight enough compared to let's say a Leviathan? Asking because I hate boost pedals, you know. Um, the SLO isn't the tightest amplifier, but it's still for six string stuff tight enough, in my opinion. Um, if you want to tighten up your amp without sacrificing the character too much, because that's a reason why I don't use boost pedals that often, I do use them when it's needed or when I'm using a very low tuned guitar for example to make the low tuned you know the low strings work in the mix and stuff but if you want to do that without sacrificing the character too much just use an eq in front of the amplifier and gently remove some low end maybe bump the mids up a little bit bump some treble up and that should give you a more tight sound without really really altering the character of the amplifier too much but I find the SLO pretty tight. And the Leviathan is all, it's tight, but it's also not like the tightest amplifier. And I like that because when an amplifier isn't super tight by default, it gives you room to play. You know, it gives you a little bit of that fat sound if you need it. And if you want to get a more tight sound, put a pedal up front and sculpt it a little bit to make it more tight. So that's in general why. I tend to prefer amplifiers that are a little bit more fat and loose by default. Not always, but just kind of in general. I hope that helps. David Bretman, I have one guitar, LTD SCRT 607B. Don't you mean the SCT 607B? And I honestly feel like it has made me more creative. Do you ever feel overwhelmed with all the equipment that you have? No, not really. No, it inspires me, to be honest. Uh, I love it. But I can see why for other people, you know, it, could be, it could be very different. But uh, the more gear, the more gear, the better for me. Uh, but I, you know, occasionally I sell things. I've sold a guitar recently that I didn't use. And sometimes I sell an amplifier because I just don't use it enough. So, yeah. Um. Any suggestions for a hand-wired amp kit? No, not at all. I don't know anything about that, to be honest. Alexander, Quad Cortex versus Fractal in 2024. Good question. That could be a video in itself. However, my thoughts on that subject are, I like both. Uh, in general, I think that the Fractal stuff is just more solid, per perhaps more reliable as well. Depth with the possibilities regarding, you know, the tweakability, the keep on upgrading those amplifier models. And the stock amp models in the Quad Cortex just aren't as good, in my opinion. In fact, some of the stock amplifier models are pretty bad, actually. However, the captures in the Quad Cortex are really cool. 
So if you have a bunch of amplifiers that you want to capture, capture those and they can sound pretty accurate. Not in all cases, but a lot of amplifiers when you capture them can sound pretty good. Let's say 85% to 90% there and then Tonex could be like 95%. So that's a really cool benefit of the quad cortex. And you can make a bunch of presets with your own captures in it and combine it with effects. And, and th so that's really exciting about the quad cortex for me. When it comes to the stock amp modeling, for me personally, I think that the fractal stuff is better. But that's also just my taste and also based on all the comparisons that I did and stuff. Now, I'm definitely not saying that the Quad Cortex stock amp models are bad. They certainly are not. And you can get some great tones out of it. It's just not, they don't sound as close to the real amplifiers as the Helix and the Fractal stuff. Because we shouldn't leave out the Helix. Because the Helix, I love the Helix. You know, it's still underrated when it comes to the accuracy of the amp modeling. I think that Fractal and Line 6 are pretty much. When it comes to the accuracy, pretty similar, to be honest. And then Quad Cortex with the stock amp models is a little bit below, but then the captures take it up a notch. So it's, yeah, it's a cool device. Eric, I can't afford a lot of amps, so I got an Amp 1 Iridium. Cool. I love watching your videos to get more information on how to... Diabog high gain? I don't know what you're saying. Any good budget recommendations for budget cabs? Yeah, I got a used orange or a used Engel 2x12, like the ones I have. Those are awesome. Like a used orange PPC 212. Can't go wrong with that. Or an Engel 212 with the vintage 30s. Wonderful cabinets. That's what I would recommend. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Gizmo 2578. How do you spread the love amongst all of your amps? Do some go unplayed for days, months, years? Yeah, of course. Um, I work so much in this studio. And usually when I'm here, I just work on my videos. So I don't have time to plug in all my amps. Mm. Excuse me. I don't have time to plug in all my amplifiers and play them all. So uh, some of my amps, you know, don't get played for months at a time. But then I, tr I try to feature them in comparisons and stuff. I like to go back and forth between various types of amplifiers for my videos and stuff. So, yeah, that's kind of my little answer. Um, let's see. Constantine, M, how much amps will be too much for you? Well... In terms of the amount, I'm pretty close to the limit right now. I think, I guess I have like 65 or so amps as of right now. I'm also counting like the small preamp types amp types of amps, like the Friedman IRX and the, the Baroni stuff. So those are amps as well. And I'm actually trying to sell three amplifiers right now. My Randall Diablo, my Orange Rocker 30, and one other one that I can't remember. And I'm trying to make some room for the new amplifiers that are coming because I simply don't have enough room. <laughs> so I hope that answers your question. I don't like selling amplifiers, but you know, you have to free up some budget every now and then. I also have other hobbies like um, 4K movies and comic books. Behind here, there are two cupboards filled with comic books. I like reading comics and that's, it's not a, I mean, it's not a very expensive hobby, but also not very affordable. So sometimes I have to free up some budget for that. Okay. Conrad, how do you choose the right IR and avoid ear fatigue or avoid being overwhelmed by the amounts of IRs you have to choose from? Your guitar sound is always spot on. Thank you so much. Well, a lot of it has to do with I guess my experience with the IRs that I use with the own hammer stuff, I just know what, what would work for me very fast when I use a certain type of amplifier. Let's say I'm using an amplifier that sounds a little bit too polite and I need to sound it needed to sound a little bit more aggressive Then I usually go for the low tuned essentials by own hammer, because that's a great IR pack for making things a little bit more metal. 
And if I need something that's a little bit more warm in the mids, for example, then I go to the rock box. So I kind of know that even before I, you know, try different IRs. I, I never really go browsing. I just try a couple and then, hey, this one sounds good. There we go. And it also has to do with how Onamer arranges the packs. You know, they make it so that you don't need to be overwhelmed by all the amounts. In fact, I made a video about this a month ago or so about how, in my opinion, Onhammer makes great stuff that is very easy to use. The Rockbox series, I mean. Check out my video to, to, you know, to learn more about my thoughts on that and how you can get great results very fast. Fractal is best white box modeling you can get and the Quad Cortex is black box modeling. So choose what will suit you best. I don't really know what the difference is, but I believe you, Levon. Alexander, I have an FM9 now, but con contemplating between that or Kemper and Quad Cortex. Probably just gas. Probably just gas. It's a very innocent condition. <laughs> I'm an 8-string player. Um, don't get a Kemper. I'm sorry. I don't recommend getting a Kemper. But that's just my personal opinion. So I, I know that a lot of people love that stuff. If you want to do captures, definitely get a Quad Cortex over the Kemper. Or... Keep your FM9 and get a Tonex, Tonex pedal. That should get you the best of all the worlds. Again, my opinion. Donnie, weird question. Oh my God, this is getting weird. But if you had to choose three Lunchbox amps for Doom Metal, tuning to C sharp standard, Doom Metal, Lunchbox amps for Doom Metal. So you mean the sludgy stuff, right? Let me know if you're still here, if that's what you mean. And also, is headroom important to you? Because I've got lunchbox amplifiers with a lot of headroom, like the Victory Kraken. But the 15-watt oranges, for example, they sound awesome, but they don't have a lot of headroom. So, yeah, it depends. As Dave Friedman always says, depends. If you're still here, Donnie, let me know in the comments you know, a little bit more specific what you would need for the Doom Metal C standard, C sharp standard lunchbox. Um, not the Rocker 30. Yeah, I, I want to sell that amp because I need to make need to make room and they don't make that amplifier anymore. And I just I prefer to have some amps that are a little bit more relevant to the market as of right now. I'm sorry. It's a great amp though. Um, oh, Donnie, yes, yeah, sludge, stoner rock, headroom is important as it will push my Emperor 2x12 cab. Okay, okay. So, a couple of good launch box amplifiers with a lot of headroom. Well, one thought that I have initially is the MT15, although it's not really sludgy, to be honest. So forget it, forget it, forget that one. The Victory, Victory Kraken Mark II, that little beast <laughs> over here. It's 50 watts. The clean channel is great. The crunch channel is cool, a lot, very cool, but it needs some fuzz or boost to get it to sound over the top. And then the, the gain two channel is very tight. So that's not the best stoner sound, to be honest. But those other two channels can't go wrong. And that has a lot of, lot of headroom. So when it comes to the lunchbox amplifiers, that's basically the one I'd recommend. Yeah, or maybe like the orange dual terror. Yeah, the dual terror. It's 30 watts, so it should get you pretty far when it comes to the uh, the headroom. Not clean headroom, but it, it can go loud for sure. All right, let me continue. I'm going to stay here for, let's say, 15 more minutes max, and then I need to leave for dinner. Uh, so if you got any questions, Go, go, go. Sup, dude? Who asked about the crack? And thanks for replying. Dude who... Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll take a look at the pedal you mentioned. Currently using a Boss GE7 in the loop. Yeah, yeah. If it's not... If it's still not doing your thing, maybe it's just not the amplifier for you. And that's also something to consider. I mean, you could go to great lengths 
to shape the tone so that it sounds as you want it. But in the end, you just need to get an amplifier that does the thing without any help, if you know what I mean. I mean, that would be preferred. That would be my advice anyway. So yeah, maybe, or or get a different type of cabinet. Maybe get a cabinet with brighter speakers or something. It's hard to say from a distance. Cameron Romero, what would you consider the essentials for Rockbox collection? Trying to determine, so he's talking about the Ownhammer IRs, which speakers to start with without shelling out hundreds of bucks on them all out of the gate. Okay, so firstly, they are very affordable, so that's great. So you don't need to spend a lot of money. Definitely get the V30EN1999A Rockbox, which is like the best sounding V30 ever. Um, yeah, that's like the essential one. And then, then I use the greenback often, the M25L for a great general general greenback sound. Then you can also look into the creambacks for a cool and a little bit more unique sound. And the DV77 is also recommended because that's a cool, modern, popular speaker. I guess those would be some recommendations for me. Oh, and also the V30MV. So that's the Mar Marshall vintage speaker that one is also really cool has a cool character yeah that would be my main recommendations basically hope that helps um okay doesn't an ir make everybody sound the same at least when you mic on a real cabinet so many can go wrong blah 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 no not in my opinion unless everybody used the exact same ir with the same amplifier and the same load box etc so i don't think so of course, with a real cabinet, there are more variables. You just have to move the microphone a couple of millimeters and your sound changes, of course. So if you want a really unique sound, I guess you could say, that's really you and you don't want the sound that an IR creator has made for you, maybe miking up a real cabinet is your thing. It's totally fair. Um... Tonex pedal is on sale right now on Toman. Cool. I recommend it for accurate capturing. Yeah, yeah. Wes says, we need some SDS Tonex captures of an OR30. I don't have an OR30. Sorry. I'd love to try one. On a mic, you never get the same. Yeah, yeah I know what you're saying. Yeah, that's what I said, basically. Conrad, what are the best sounding records you have heard this year? To be honest, I don't check out a lot of new music, so that's really hard for me to answer. Sorry. <laughs> I listen to a lot of old stuff. Not like super old per se, but I just, I'm a creature of habit. So I, I don't usually go out to discover a lot of new music. I just really like the feeling of nostalgia when I'm listening to music that I already know, if that makes sense. I'm also the type of person that, um, that, um, you know, rewatches movies and stuff. It's just how I am. A couple more questions. Let's see. Two by 12 cabinets, vertical versus horizontal preference or use case. I haven't tried a vertical one myself. I imagine that those have a little bit less low end and I like a low end. So I would probably usually go for a horizontal one. However, it could be nice to have, if you have like a little lunchbox head, it could be nice to have a vertical two by 12 to put your head on so that it's closer to, you know, your hands and stuff. It might look pretty cool. Um, let's see. You guys are having a healthy discussion in there. <laughs> Good. All right. The Mesa Nomad 100 head is good for sludge rock. Yeah, I haven't tried that one. Could be cool. John, what's your limit Your limit on 5150 block letter? Your my limit? I'm not sure what you mean. You mean price limit? All right, guys, I'm going to leave in, let's say, 10 minutes max. If you guys have any questions for me, drop them now. This is your last chance. And then uh, then I'm going to go have dinner with my family. <laughs> hey, Donnie, thanks for hanging out, man. See you around.
So guys, if you have any questions, drop them now if you want me to answer your question. Could uh, talk about my favorite color. We could talk about cool stuff that's coming to the channel soon. I already talked about this at the beginning of the stream, but Lichlerm Audio Prometheus coming soon with a custom finish. My Ref Generator 120 Mark III Ref B also coming soon. Really excited. Okay, got some questions. Lucas, what are your thoughts on the amplifier market? There's always There always seems to be new amps coming out, but do you feel that there is room for new amp brands or is the market already oversaturated? Dude, there's always room for new amp brands. There's so much room to make amps unique in terms of the sound, in terms of the features, in terms of the looks. There's plenty of room for new amplifiers, in my opinion. Hell yeah. Power stage versus pedal baby. I don't know. I already, I do know that I like the orange stuff for pedal platforms. That's why for pedal videos, sometimes I use my, uh, there you go, Rocker 15 Terror because the clean channel is like um, very good for pedals. So my gut instinct is pedal baby, but I don't know. <laughs> have you seen Fallout already? I have not. I might watch it, but as I said, I'm a creature of habit and I'm currently re-watching all the MCU movies. So I, I'm at Avengers 2, uh, Age of Ultron. So I need to watch that one and then maybe something else. Ian, who would win in a fight? Superman or Hulk? <laughs> Close call. That's hard. They're not in the same universe, so it wouldn't work because they're they're made of different types of atoms. They're, they're in a different universe, dude. Don't you know that? You know that, right? <laughs> uh, looking forward to your Rev review. Yeah, man, me too. Fernando, is there a best tube brand or is it a matter of luck? I don't know. I'm not the best person to answer that question. Rat Bastard Brewery. Hey, John, just joined in. I was just telling my friend last week to check out your channel. Thank you. Almost even more impressed than your gear reviews is your originals for demoing. They are so impressive. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Thanks so much. <clears throat> really appreciate it. All right. A couple more minutes and then I'm gonna then I'm gonna go. We're eating spaghetti carbonara, but the vegetarian version of that. Uh with uh like sun-dried tomatoes and stuff. It's pretty yummy. Looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. So yeah, a couple more minutes, guys. If you got questions, drop them now. Drop them now. Last chance. And then I'm going to spend time with my family and watch a little bit of a movie tonight. 4K Blu-ray. Oh, yeah. See you, Lucas. Have a good one. Cheers. See you later, dude. So... Yeah, I just, I guess uh, there aren't any questions coming in anymore. So that's fine. I had a blast for almost one and a half hours. Yeah, guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for hanging out. And thanks for asking me questions about gear. I love talking about gear. Love it a lot. Um, yeah, stay tuned on the channel for a lot of cool stuff. A lot of cool stuff is happening soon. Um, if you want to know more specifics, check out the beginning of this video. I talked about videos that are coming and gear that's coming and all that stuff. So, uh, thanks everybody for hanging out. I really appreciate you. I hope you have a good day or a good evening or, you know, whatever, um, where, wherever you're at. One more question. Okay. One more question. Give me the question. Give me the question. Fernando is just God of War. Come on, Red Bastard Brewery. I'm about to leave. Give me the question. Give me the question. I'm waiting for his question, and that's going to be the final question for this chat. And then I'm going to leave. And then I'm going to leave. <laughs> Would there be a big difference between a 50-watt rock of verb versus the 100-watt? Okay. Some people say that the difference is huge. And I think that you're really going to notice the difference only if you're playing on big stages with a super loud drummer. 50 watt rock of herb is going to give you plenty of juice and you're not going to get the feeling, in my opinion, 
oh, I'm missing some headroom or something. However, when you put the 100 watt next to that and crank it up, you're going to notice that it has a bit more oomph and air and headroom. If that's really important to you, you know, maybe get the 100. But in terms of the tone and the loudness, 50 watt amplifier, it's very loud. Hope that helps. Thanks, everybody. I had a great time. Hope you had a great time, too. And uh, rock on. Stay safe. And uh, thanks again for hanging out and for all your comments and your likes and your subscribers and subscribers. And uh, check out the Magic of Tube Amplifier documentary if you haven't already. Stay tuned for more awesome videos in the near future. Thank you guys so much. Hope to see you soon. Cheers.